Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Mythgard in Middle-Earth. My name is Corey Olson, the Tolkien Professor, joined as always by my friend Grifflet, who has been standing in the suddenly colder atmosphere of Skulfig here, uh, as he is still kind of gazing in bemusement about himself at the aftermath of the quite unexpected attack of the Frost Giant, uh, uh, who uh, yeeted through uh, somewhere in that direction. So today we're going to try to get to the, well, I don't know if we'll get all the way to the bottom of the whole mystery, but uh, at least we're hoping to uh, uh, find Thrum's remains. Uh, of course, I'm not going to really believe he's dead until I see the corpse, but we will see about that. So uh, first of all, though, before we get started, I need to ask your help uh, uh, in a very serious way because I'm having, I'm having a problem that I can't figure out. So uh, the good news is that I have uh, my new system. It came in like two weeks early, so that was delightfully. Uh, I, I don't know who is more delighted, me or my son, so that I don't have to use his room again. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, so here I am on my new system, so everything is like fast and stable, and I've got my graphic graphics back up to ultra high, and all that's all good. Um, uh, I think also I've uh, uh, my streaming is higher def as well, which is kind of cool. Um, so anyway, that's all good stuff, uh, and uh, I'm I'm excited about that. But I'm having a problem. So the bad news, right? Uh, the bad, so that, that's that, that. That's the good news, and it's a great deal of good news. The bad news is that of this means, of course, this is a brand new installation of Lotro, which I downloaded and installed on my new machine, and I'm having uh, a user interface issue that I cannot, for the life of me, figure out. Um, and here is my problem. My problem is, uh, whenever I, I I can't right click on things, my right click is broken. Um, when I try to right click on something, uh, what happens is the, okay, so the mouse, the mouse goes away and now I'm locked into this mode where the camera view and where Grifflet and my character, or, or Grifflet and my camera, I mean, move around with the mouse. I'm not clicking anything uh, and I can't go, I can't turn like the turn buttons are only turn into strafe buttons, and I have to right click again to free up the mouse, and then it enables me to move normally. But it won't let me right click on anything. Like I, I will not be able to get like the uh, the mead hall here will be completely inaccessible to me because when I try to right click, it just puts me into this weird camera mode. I have no idea what on earth is going on. I've tried everything. I'm like I've been like scouring. The thing, this is, these are the only mouse options that I see. I don't see any thing um, uh, here. I don't know. Like, I, um, so yeah, <laughs> this is a, I've never even seen this before. Uh, I've never even, in, I, not only, you know, do I not remember this as a default setting, which I guess it must be, I don't know, but um, no, it's not an X issue. It's This is not target. It's not target mode. It's totally different from target mode. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. In fact, I, I wanted to be so certain. I hate target mode so much, uh, and I wanted to be so certain that it was not target mode that I actually, like, deleted uh, the... Uh, uh, the key map, <laughs> the X key map, uh, from uh, uh, you know on onto that because yeah. I, I, anyway, um, exactly. So uh, yeah. So and this is stable. I've like been out and into the game several times, and it's doing this every time. I'm even using a different physical mouse. Originally, I was using. You know my little like uh, you know Mac, Mac Magic Mouse that came with my machine, and uh, and I was like maybe you know it's having a hard time interpreting you know weird signals from that. So I'm using the same mouse I used to use on my old machine, uh, which is working the same way. Everything is happening. Um, so yeah, and I don't even think it has anything to do with key mapping because I'm looking. I, I, I've been I've been searching all the way through the key maps and I don't see any place where button one, which is right clicking 
because button zero is left clicking, button one is right clicking. That, again, that much I've ascertained by careful study of the key mapping. Uh, nowhere in here have I seen anything uh, which suggests that, uh, yeah, no, no, uh, 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 Telerion, I've had no problem right clicking anywhere else other than in Lodro. Uh, absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah, no, Matthias, exactly. It's the right clicking seems to be fine everywhere else. Uh, uh, and again, even in some ways. So like, uh, you know, when you hold down, right click, uh, it will it will move the camera. I can do that, see? Uh, I can do, this is, this is, so if I wanted to steer with my mouse, I can do that. Here I am steering with my mouse by holding down right click. So the holding down right click is working normally. It's just the single click, which just toggles me into this weird stand in one place and look around mode, which I'd never even heard of. Which I'd never even heard of. Um, yeah, so I've, I've put down the mouse, as you can see, I've put down the mouse look sensitivity and smoothing almost as far as they can go because that was like a problem I was having. Uh, but I, that I fixed and it seems, as you see, I was able to steer reasonably well with my mouse. Oh, hang on, my Y axis is doing what funny things. Okay, so yeah, like I'm able to do this okay now, no problems. Um, but but yeah, it's the single right click that I don't get. Um, yeah, no, like holding down right click is working the way that holding down right click always did work. Um, but. Uh, but no, it's not the 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 single click right. It's not the same, um, because like it toggles this mode now where my cursor's gone, and all I'm doing I'm doing just moving the mouse and moving the mouse moves the camera around without holding down a button or touching anything, right? Um, it's so it's it's a toggle mode and I can't move. Okay, I can move forwards and backwards, but I can't move side to side. I can, I can only strafe. It's I, I've never I've never even seen this mode. I've this I've never encountered this. I don't see it described anywhere. It's like completely bizarre. It's, so sorry, you know, like thank you for joining me for troubleshooting with the Tolkien professor today. But seriously, I am at my wit's end. I've been trying and trying to figure out what on earth. So I was hoping to. Be, you know, I can try to do as much as I can do without like entering a building or <laughs> interacting with an object or a person. But um, it's uh, it's super weird. Um, yeah. Well, right. Um, try changing the mouse click speed on my computer. I could do that. Um, I. Sure. Um, but. Okay. The quick speed. I will see if I can do the quick speed. Whoop. Hang on. There we go. Uh, let me see here. Hang on a second. Okay. I'm actually not get. I don't even have a quick speed option that I can find. All right. Let's see. Um. Hey, Catriona, let's see if we can, let's see if we can, uh, 
use your workaround to get in, let's see. Okay, so I'm standing next to the door, Katriana. And I'm going to hit the delete button. Aha! I have a new keyboard which enables me to do that. Okay, uh, and then you. Look at that! Okay, all right, who needs to right click when I can use a cumbersome keyboard chain instead? Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. All right. That's true, and I should be able to... Well, actually, that's a good question. Can I select people? Yep, select is working fine. Left click is okay. Which means I should be able to... Okay, no, but how do I interact with people? I can't... I can't use Kuneberg, apart from the fact that, that would be incredibly rude. Uh, the command doesn't seem to work. Um, so, uh, yeah, how do I, uh, is there a keyboard command for like starting a dialogue with a person? F10, you say? Oh, no, that just moved me. Now I'm clicked on the, I'm, I'm, I'm going back and forth among people here. F9. No. That's not... Whoa! That's not doing it. You? No, oh, it's not. Uh-uh. Hang on a second. Where is that? What's this? What's this? What's this called? U is U selection. Oh, it just might be that she won't do it because she doesn't want to talk to me because she's still in grief. Of course. Right. She's still mourning. Okay. Fine. Um,. Okay, hang on a second. So JJ say asking, apart from how you enter it, does this mystery mode differ from holding the right button? No. No, I think maybe it doesn't. Yeah, no, it doesn't. It's the same. Okay, right, so the problem wasn't that I didn't have the functionality to interact with Kuneberg, it's just that she doesn't want to talk to me, which is, that makes complete sense, of course. All right, then I'm going to carry on and just try to remember not to right-click, and we'll be fine. So, okay, Grifflet, thank you, and we're back to work here, <laughs> trying to work around this problem, and okay. So, of the things that we need to do, so our quest for, our epic quest... We're looking for a white hand camp, which, don't get me wrong, seems important and everything, but, uh, you know, finding Thurum seems a little bit more urgent. Uh, so let's do that. Wait, hang on. Let's not do that right now. Please remove that from tracker. There we go. Okay. All right, fine. Great. All right, so let's 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 look for let's look for poor Thrum. Um, wow, really? He was chucked that far out of town. Whoa, dude. So these guys have been transfixed. and turned into ice. Hmm. That's not good. Okay. Well. We have some issues here. Let me, uh... Do I do the milestone? Yeah. 
Don't need. Uh, oops. I accidentally right clicked. There we go. That's going to take some doing to remember. Probably don't need Hoot Build anymore. There we go. All right. Okay, so. Great. Oh man, look at where the gate was just blasted in. And this poor guard. No, that's not a guard, that's an orc. Okay, I was gonna say, it looked like that this guard was knocked over and his pants stripped off, which just seems way more than is necessary. But that was an orc, okay, fine. And another orc, whoa, look at that dead orc in the snowbank. Yikes, it's a grim scene. Okay, so, frost giants. That is a daring maneuver. There's no question that that's a daring maneuver on the part of the Lotro folks. Uh, giants, of course, uh, play a really kind of interesting part in, uh, you know, play an interesting role in um, Lord of the Rings you know, in Middle-earth kind of uh, history. By history, I primarily mean <clears throat> manuscript history uh, rather than chronological, oops, rather than chronological history within the, uh, uh, within the world itself. Um, giants are fascinating because on the one hand, you would totally, it seems like there should be giants in Middle-earth. Right, it really does. I mean, they are, there are very giants are very traditional monsters. You know, I'm I'm just good. This is not helping me. There's no, I was hoping I could take a left at some point, and I seems like I can't. So I'm gonna go back. Um, uh, anyway, so as I say, it seems like there should be giants because there are so many other kinds <clears throat> of. Um, uh, there's so many other kinds of of monsters, of uh, of you know, sort of fairy tale monsters and uh, traditional monsters from traditional legends. Um, that giants seem like just the kind of monsters that Tolkien would have included, and in fact, of course, he did at some points. Um, when we go back further, you know, when we go back, of course, to the Hobbit, everybody remembers the stone giants in the Hobbit. Um, and, uh, you know, even though, you know, what, oh, hang on, I've got orcs up here. Better go in stealth here. Um, okay. Anyway, so, um, these hostile lands, okay, that's a deed. For a second, I thought that was the name of the place I was going into. Like, welcome to these hostile lands, which would be kind of fun, actually. Um, this isn't the White Hand camp I'm, I was looking for, is it? Anyway, so like I said, uh, you know, people will remember the stone giant uh, the stone giant, uh, uh, the, the, the stone giants in the Hobbit, like they were there. There were giants throwing stones, um, and there's not really any reason to think that they're not, you know, normal giants. Um, you know, like the kinds of giants you would have found in Jack and the Beanstalk or something like that. And indeed, uh, we can see that Tolkien's plan had been to include giants. In fact, the Lord of the, the published Lord of the Rings itself still bears the memory uh, of the giants. Darn it, I can't get there from here either. Arg. Anyway, okay. So yeah, it, it, as I say, the published Lord of the Rings still bears the uh, uh, the the memory of giants. Uh, you will remember, of course, the 
conversation between Sam and Ted Sandyman in The Fellowship of the Ring when he talks about giants. These giants, these tree men, these giants, as you might say. Um, now, of course, in Tolkien's earlier work, tree men just means men as tall as trees. It means giants like Jack and the Beanstalk. Um, and that's clearly what they are referring to. In fact, the... Um, uh, in fact, the the likely reference um, to uh, uh, like in the original draft, when Tolkien first wrote that sentence in the conversation between Ted and Sam, what he was probably referring to the sighting. Right, that had been happening is probably a setup for Gandalf's disappearance. The fishing village seems to be abandoned. Huh. So there's there's secrets here. Whoa. I'm looking. Yeah. Whoa, it's burned out and that looks bad. Huh, I guess I've got to go discover the secrets of the fishing village. And I think that was the orc camp I was supposed to find because it doesn't say something about... Oh, no, yeah, see, that was part of my uh, part of my quest. So, yeah, that was definitely the one. Well, I'll find Thrum and then I'll get right back to that. Anyway, so, because, um, of course, Gandalf originally, that, that Gandalf was going to go away and not come back. Um, was always going to be the plan. Um, and originally, of course, because this was long before Saruman, the character of Saruman, had been even invented, um, he was going to... The, what was going to delay Gandalf is that he was going to be captured... He was going to be trapped in a tower by an evil giant named Treebeard. That was going to be the name of the tree man, the giant, uh, who was going to capture, or at least kind of corner, Gandalf. Um... And uh, and so I think that the reference that Sam and uh, that Sam the story right that Sam is is uh, retailing um, at the uh, Green Dragon there uh, is uh, a reference to like is setting up the giant who was later going to be uh, cornering Gandalf. Tolkien left it in right even after he decided not only is that that was not was going to be what was going to happen to Gandalf but also when. Um, he decided that there weren't going to be any giants in Middle-earth at all, apparently. Um, though I have to say that it isn't true that Tolkien, like, made that decision completely, right? Like, he, he never sat down and said, okay, I am passing a law, no giants in Middle-earth. Like, he never said that. Um, so it is not, it would, you know, and notice, of course, he didn't take it out of The Hobbit. He did revise The Hobbit, and he didn't take the stone giants out of The Hobbit. Um, uh, so... You know, uh, there uh, nor the reference that Gandalf makes to finding a you know a reasonably friendly giant to stop up the goblins' holes, right? Uh, he, um, you know, a, a, a more or less decent giant. Remember that? Um, so yeah, there are. Um, uh, there's no reason to be dogmatic about giants in Middle Earth, even though Tolkien did take out every other reference to giants and ch and did not end up bringing them into the Lord of the Rings, but he didn't bring them into the Lord of the Rings, I think, not because, again, he rejected the whole concept, but rather because he found another concept that he liked, right? Um, when they finally got to the forest dwelling of, uh, of the giant Treebeard, um, Tolkien discovered that he was quite different. Uh, and, you know, the Ents... Um, uh, the Ents... Uh, uh, emerged and you know uh, and the rest is history but um, anyway so that's um, that's what happened hang on okay there we go something unnatural has killed this man upon this very road he bears no marks or injuries he has fallen where he stood an eerie mist encircles him and a faint wailing can be hear heard nearby oh dear That's not good. 
So this this mist. Hmm. All right. Continue to stealth yourself here, Gr Griffin. There's an archer. Oh, it's an orc archer. Okay, fine. Now I'm going to need to take a right at some point. I'm up in the high knolls again. Finally, working my way towards where my red haired friend seems to have finally wound up. Griffith, you have your stealth mode working well today. Uh oh. Uh oh. Up another layer? You've got to be kidding me. Still not high enough, Griffith. Man, I'm really a little bit surprised he got chucked up the mountain this far. Excuse me, orcs. Sorry. Coming around. Got to find. Friend might be still possibly alive. Or is this just the place that I'm supposed to be looking from? Aha, it is. Okay, so if I go way up on, so far up on the mountain that I can't see anything and it's in the middle of the night, I might be able to see him from here. something in his horn where oh there it is you recognize the horn instantly as Thrum's own the horn he carries with him always Below upon the road, you see a body. Wait, is that the body I already found to get up here? All right. Let us go re-examine the body, I guess. Okay. Um, great. So, anyway, all of my little digression about giants uh, is as much as to say... Uh, that, as I say, on the one hand, it's kind of daring to have a, a frost giant like this show up because I mean, this is looks like a very Norse frost giant. Um, okay, yeah, not Thrum, some other dude. So that's it. Bring the horn to Kuneberg. Oh, great. Um, we're still waiting to find Thrum. I guess he's probably not going to be around here. I should probably follow the quest chain. Which means I should probably... Oh, wait. I'm also supposed to search for whatever killed the dude. Yeah, hang on a second. Um, oh, is that down in the village? Or maybe down in that little gully? All right. Let's finish the things I've unlocked up here all. Stop by that orc camp on the way. Visit the fishing village. Since we're around here. I like Wildemore so, so far. Okay. Um, yeah, so as I say, it's a bold move, but I think it's totally justifiable. I think it's time for some burglarious action. Wait, I can't... Oh, that's Contact Peddler. Yeah, that's just the wrong button. There we go. Uh, oh, I failed to burgle any items? Oh, well. Blood in the snow, huh? 
Some of the white hand orcs that attacked Skulfig have established an encampment. All right, so I will go and, I guess, take revenge on the orcs. That seems a little... Okay. Let me see. Oh, yeah, I already found the empty fishing village. Wrath of the Daigul. Daigul haunt Fiskworth. Their presence might prove dangerous. Huh. Well, yeah. What are they? Ice spirits, I'm guessing? Hi, oh, thank you for saluting. That was very kind. So you have a really cool helmet. Somebody else attacking me? Oh, you are. That is so vexing. I really wanted to, like... Oh, I was dead and disarmed. Hang on. You keep punching him, Griflet. He'll regret that. Um, yeah, I was going to examine your armor. Okay, now I can. Uh, yeah, I, that helmet piece he's got is really interesting. Oh. I just have to up and die like that. Ah, oh, excuse me. Don't move. Yeah. Okay. Fine. You can attack me. Uh, okay. No, I was thinking of looking to see if that was a design on his chest plate, but I don't think it is. Uh, it's just sort of a pattern. Um... Yeah, those, like, goggle things he's got going on are really kind of interesting. Wah! That was not friendly. Whew! Yeah, yikes. All right. I like their little hats, though. I would look... Can I... Any chance they're gonna drop a helmet like that? Because... I would love a helmet like that. And I've got some dread going on in here. What is wrong with a well? I mean, okay. Dead body. Who did the dead bodies? That's gotta be orcs, right? So orcs came and sacked the place. But what did they do to the well? Can't jump down there, huh? Fool of a took. Oh well. Can't throw myself down the well and be a no further nuisance. What is this, a little mini cage? The Daigle run on little misty legs. Oh, that's adorable. Do you see that? I thought they were just floating around, but they're not. They've got little steam legs. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah, I mean, they don't go all the way down to the ground, but that's adorable. I love it. Look at them walking on their little legs. It's too bad they don't have boots. No, I'm just saying that these cages look sort of horribly like, um, you know, like grown-up cages and kitty cages. It's awful. Orcs are bad, bad people. Oh, take that. Okay, so let's see. Any other evidence of what happened here? Well, I mean, so it's clear that orcs came and sacked this place. Did the Daigul or whatever they are, did they do this? I don't know. Did they just haunt it? Was this place just opened up to them after the orcs sacked it? Or did they take part in the sacking? You 
Investigate the tower standing on the island? Huh. That's a, a, very, a more specific instruction now. Or maybe I only just noticed it. Um, okay, I'm supposed to def defeat another dying coal, which I can do, presumably. Can I one-shot him, though? Boom! <laughs> yes, I can! Oh! Oh, yeah. Right. Well, if only they didn't respawn. Okay. Alright, so that was satisfying. So... I'm assuming that these Daigul, they're shades, right? Hence the ghoul. Um, they're like ice spirits. Here, wow. Oh. Might face the cold, oh dear. Deadly frost grims are appearing on the edge of Lake Ing uh, Isingmir. And need to be defeated before their numbers grow. Oh, Grimms. I haven't fought Grimms in forever. Wow. Okay. Huh. So, yeah, it looks like the lake is only frozen at the edge there. And there's a tower on an island? Like, oh, that tower! It's just a watchtower. It's a Rohirrim watchtower, obviously. But there's somebody wailing in it, apparently. Wow. Okay. So, these frost spirits, what's their story? I can't help but wonder. Are they natural spirits of the region? Which have been somehow... corrupted? I mean, this goes back a long way. We've seen this kind of thing uh, forever in the game. Um, and I've always felt that it fit rather nicely in Tolkien's world. Tolkien's world is full of uh, sort of natural spirits. That's a common thing in Tolkien's world, though they don't come out in the narrative that often. Oh, he beckons me. With what gesture exactly? Hi, did you guys want to see me? I guess you did. Just checking what this beckoning business was about. Losing my cursor. Okay. Wailing Daigle. Here we are. Oh, I get to talk to you? Excellent. That gives me a chance to look around behind and see your whole gear. Okay. What's your story? I need assistance from one who let yet lives. I I'm all ears. I do not wish to be here. I am bound by my captor and cannot leave until freed. Okay. So you are the wraith of a living person? I mean, formerly living person. My captor hides away inside a crypt in the middle of Lake in Isingmere, south of here. Seek him out and defeat him so that I may finally leave this place. In order to call him forth, you'll need to open my casket, which is deep within the crypt. Okay. So did you kill that dude up on the path up there? Why did finding his corpse lead me to you? Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Um, so where's this crypt then? Oh, way out. The other side of the island. Or the other side of the lake. All right, well, let me finish up the other stuff in this area. Excuse me, guys. I don't want to have to kill you again. As much fun as it was the first time. Oh, there's a Grim. I found some of the lakeshore Grims. Can I sneak up on a Grim? 
Yes, I can. I'm telling you, if there is anything more satisfying than one-shotting something as a burglar, I don't know what it is. Oh, hey, wait. Come back. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, this is going to go well. Okay, so it's the Grimms, then, which are the these sort of stray spirits, which are kind of running amok. And the Daigul appear to be the wraiths of dead folks. Which again leads me to question the cause and effect from back at that village, right? That is, did these Daigul participate in causing the destruction uh, of the town? Or did they just emerge after the town was destroyed? Obviously by orcs, as certainly those Daigul were not going to make hanging cages. And that green mist that was emerging from the uh, well certainly looked like it was doing nobody any good. Oh, man. I, I failed to one-shot the last... Okay, let's see. Oh, good. I have thinned them. Excellent. Okay, so I've thinned out the Frost Grims. I've talked to the Daigul. Gotta go back to the crypt, but I gotta defeat some orcs. And I'm supposed to find the camp, which I think I did. Oh no, I gotta defeat mounted combat foes. Oh, wait a second. Maybe that wasn't because I was at that camp and it didn't... Oh, that's the one I need to find. Way down there. Oh, I see. Right. Well. All right, I'll get around to it then. Maybe I'd better kill a bunch more of the White Hand Orcs while I'm up here then. As it might be you. Hey, get back over here. I said, get back over here. All right. Thank you. And let's see. Anyway, so as I pick these off, I will uh, carry on. Um. Let me go back to another, instead of rambling about giants more, which, of course, I could also do. Uh, let me, uh... Go back, let me go back to uh, answering another lore question here. Let's see. All right. Uh, Geyser? I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. Is that a hard C? Geiker? Geiser? Uh, Geiser underscore was asking, do people tend to ask me questions about the Third Age? I found the First Age so interesting. Yeah, of course, I, I get a lot of Third Age questions. Uh, but um, happy to answer First Age questions. Uh, I also find the First Age very interesting. Um, let's see. Okay. Oh, we got a bunch, several questions that came in here today. Um, uh, all right, Marielle, you have a Hobbit question. We know that in the Lord of the Rings, goblins and orcs are the same thing. But when Tolkien originally wrote his children's story, not part of his epic legendarium, did he have his creatures in mind when he wrote Goblin, or something more like George MacDonald's? Great question. Okay, so. Um, 
Uh, I personally find it difficult to avoid um, connecting, at least to some extent, the goblins of The Hobbit uh, with George MacDonald's goblins. They're not identical. Um, you know, it's not like he's just like operating within that world, um, but they are pretty reminiscent, I think. Um, and of course, orcs had already been invented um, by the time he wrote The Hobbit. Uh, you know, the Glamhoth, uh, the you know the servants of Morgoth uh, from the Silmarillion. So, um, I think, Mariel, if we think about the context in which he uses the word orc in The Hobbit. I think we can begin to see the kind of, well, I don't know if I'd call it the solution because it's not exactly like there's a problem, but um, I think we can begin to see uh, how sort of the pattern here, right? Um, he uses the word orc to refer to goblins which are particularly huge and scary, right? Um, that even large goblin, this is when he's talking about how fast goblins can run bent over double, um, you know, going through their low tunnels. Uh, and he says that uh, even the largest goblins, the great orcs of the mountains, uh, can uh, do this. So, I mean, it's one of, the, it's one of the passages, of course, which makes it very clear on the one hand that... Um, uh, Orcs and goblins are the same thing, right? You know, he's uh, he's just sort of describing a, a kind of subset or a sort of, like a, you know, another name is when they get really big, you know, another name is used for them. Um, but they're, they're clearly not like a completely separate group of, uh, of, of, of folks. Um, so, but at the same time, you also notice that like when they're, big and fierce and terrifying they're orcs right they're called they're called orcs and by calling them orcs he is alluding back explicitly to the orcs of his own story traditions right um, it's also clear by the way of course that his goblins are are in theory they're kind of meant to be his orcs um, in that remember we have the elf and goblin wars so like the goblins sacked Gondolin so on the one hand it's it's clear uh, that the goblins of the Hobbit are indeed meant to be identical with the orcs, but they don't look and sound like it, right? Again, that's where we do clearly get um, uh, we do clearly get the uh, the children's version, right? You know, where um, he is adapting from all kinds of stories, you know, and, and The Hobbit is explicitly, right, such a melting pot of fairy tales and different stories and traditions. Um, you know, the melting pot of, uh, you know, of, of Beowulf and the, the uh, uh, and of, uh, you know, Norse mythology. Uh, and of George MacDonald. I think George MacDonald went into that pot too, but of course his own earlier uh, mythology went into, uh, went into it also. And of course we see that coming out in all kinds of places. So anyway, uh, that's... Uh, so yeah, so again, thinking about your specific question, both. Both. I mean, they're both in the pot. I do think that he makes the choice to have them acting and talking more like George MacDonald's goblins. I think that he is kind of narrating in something more like George MacDonald's narrative mode when he's interacting with the goblins of the Misty Mountains, or you know, when his characters are interacting with the goblins of the Misty Mountains. Um, they're not exactly the same, but yeah, I, I think that the... McDonald influence is most clear when the goblins are singing and talking. Um, uh, but um, but nevertheless, it's uh, uh, there's no question at the same time that he does intend them to be consistent. Like the Gondolin thing shows that the Silmarillion has gone into the pot too uh, and is related there as well. So both, definitely both, is the answer. Um, but um, yeah. 
Okay, let's see. All right. Kuniberg. Found his horn, but not yet his body. I'll keep looking, I promise. Oop, all right, sorry, hang on. I am afraid of what is happening to these lands. Oh, hang on. I really wish it would let me, like, keep the text large permanently. Thrym's horn, but no sign of Thrym himself. Do not tell me this. My heart thinks he is still alive. Mine too, but no one could have survived such a fall. Well, if he, he was, if he got thrown up the mountain and landed in a very deep snow drift. Oh yeah, thank you. Yeah, sorry, okay. Um, Garwig must be told, yeah, mm-hmm. I was hoping we could bear Thrym's body to Forlaw to be buried there, but we must deliver the horn instead. I will meet you there. I must attend my people and then I will leave. Okay, so you want me to go to... Wait, what happened here? Where's my cursor? Where's my cursor? Um, hello, cursor? Wow. <laughs> what on earth just happened there? Grifflet just took off. I right clicked again and Grifflet just went. That was weird. I'm telling you. All right. These right. are desperate times for the Rohirrim. Let's leave. Yeah, you leave. I'll catch up with you, Gunnarberg. I didn't get a chance to tell you this before. Is that a little... Is the symbol of Skewfig a little hatchet? That's kind of adorable. Sorry, you look really sad. Which, not surprising. Under the circumstances. But, um... Okay. Um... Alright. So... Yeah, hi. And Arwen, yeah, I'm still adjusting in lots of ways. Um, yeah, my icons are really small, um, uh, including my cursor, which looks exactly like a snowflake, so I keep losing it in one way or another. Or another. Now, I'm, I'm having some uh, issues with my interface in some ways because it's a new install and a new system and the resolution's really high, uh, which is, I think, why the icons are small. Um, but... Uh, yeah. Am I running in 4K? No idea. Not even sure what you're referring to there. I'll be completely honest. Okay, so I'm supposed to go to Four Law, um, which is not far from the crypt, as I recall. Yeah, I should swim my way over there. But first, let me finish these other things, which I was probably meant to do before I even met Thrum in the first place. So I will go back. And I will find Thrum's training camp again. Now in the absence of Thrum. All right, let's see if we can. Oh, hang on a second. I think I need to. I think I need to level him up. Yes, I do. Let's see. What do I want? Oh, yeah, no idea. Okay. Great. All right, carry on. All right, gotta put on my invisibility hat. There we go. Now, I am headed to that other orc camp, which I completely skipped. And I'm looking for the camp again, which I've been to several times. Might as well ride to the camp first and see if any of them have heard any news of Thrum. Maybe he just went home. It's possible. Oh, excuse me, orcs there. Okay, I think if I go around the corner... Uh-oh, there's a... Wait a second. Let 
this to turn off? I, think I must have done. Okay. All right, Grifflet, we're going to through the so we were looking at the unexpectedly frozen lakes originally. So there's some kind of malevolent winter force here, which we now have a shrewd suspicion as to what that is, though I don't see any of those stalagmites you know, the ice stalagmites around in this region, which seem to be the... Oh, I'm supposed to destroy some of them. Well, I'll we'll get around to it. Maybe not here. Let's see if I can find a place where there's more room to maneuver. Okay. Here's the training camp again. Men eager for battle, but is it enough? Yeah, you guys haven't seen through him, have you? I reckon not. Okay, no problem. Okay. Can I strike out overland for this? Let's see. Well, maybe not down the cliff. All right, carry on. Off we go. I'm not going to fight you. I, the last thing I'm going to do is try to go around in circles on this little narrow isthmus, this little narrow height. Okay. All right, what time is it? Okay. I gotta watch the time. I need to leave a little bit early today. Uh, I have uh, uh, a thing I'm doing this afternoon that I have to, whoop, hang on. About to leave Wildemore entirely, which is not where I'm going. Okay, so here I can just head south and see what I can find. Because I've never actually seen the orc camp. All right, because I never even went this direction. I went straight up towards Gulfi. So, that explains why I didn't discover the orc camp down here. Okay. Oh, well, I guess... I can defeat you as well as another guy. Okay. He was in my way anyway. All right. So where am I now in relationship to anything? No. Okay. Oh, and I got two warbands down here. Yikes. I guess this actually kind of works out fairly conveniently. We'll go back to the road. I can head to. Yikes. Not that way, perhaps. Again, Grifflet has never seen a cliff he doesn't enjoy jumping off of. Okay. Found the road! I guess by going this way, I can head towards Forlot and the Orc Camp. So that's convenient. Okay, anyway, sorry. So let me um, go back to another. JJ had another Lord question from today. Is there a particular reason for Glowen to be the dwarf sent to Rivendell? And Owen and Ori went with Balin to Moria. Balin himself going makes sense from a narrative standpoint, being a prominent dwarf and Bilbo's closest dwarf friend, so the death is more impactful. Um, 
Are you saying that Tolkien fridged Bowen? Uh, but were the other dwarves chosen with purpose or more or less randomly? Um, well, I mean, to some extent, I would say more or less randomly, uh, because, um, because most of the dwarves don't really have that much in the way of a personality. Um, I mean, you know, there's not that much that distinguishes them. I mean, one thing that you notice when you look at uh, the manuscript history of The Hobbit, which you can find in John Ratliff's History of The Hobbit, uh, the one or two volume version, um, when you read through that stuff, what you'll notice is that Tolkien actually reduced the dialogue of the dwarves. In the earlier drafts, more of the dwarves had more dialogue. Um, and uh, he he cut that down over time. You know, as time went on and his revisions moved forward, um, the, he consolidated the dialogue. That he cut some of it, and some of it he merely consolidated in the sense of uh, giving you know more of it to fewer people. So you know, Balin uh, increased in his role in the story as time went on because, you know, he had a, uh, a function. So rather than kind of distributing those functions across, uh, uh, you know, more, basically he, he enables to kind of focus on a few dwarves and the rest of the dwarves are sort of just kind of there. We don't know anything about the personality of Ori, uh, not in uh, The Hobbit anyway. I mean, we begin to be told some things about him like he was the one who could write well and speedily and often use the elf letters. Um, you know, it's uh, Ori's handwriting, which uh, Gimli recognizes right away uh, in the Book of Mazarbul. Um, but again, that's a later thing. That's in uh, The Lord of the Rings, not in The Hobbit. Um, in The Hobbit, I don't think Ori ever says anything or does anything in particular. But, you know, uh, Dory, of course, who carries Bilbo on a couple of occasions, um, and um, uh, and Bomber, obviously, as the fat one, uh, and Balin, uh, of course, as the lookout and Bilbo's friend. Um, these are the ones who get all of the attention. Dwalin, you know, a few of them get sort of singled out in lesser ways. Um, uh, Dwalin, for instance, as the one who arrived first at the house, right? So he kind of stands out a little bit. Um, but... Um, but yeah, it's uh, most of them don't really get differentiated at all. Really, the only thing we they're they're only I don't I only recall two things from Glowen uh, in the Hobbit. Uh, one, of course, is that he is one of the two who is particularly good at lighting fires. Um. And the other is that he was the guy who was especially rude to Bilbo. Um, you're just going to keep riding straight up the mountain, huh? Oh, come on. 20 morale points left out of 16,000? Really? Okay. Um... He, he was the one who uh, says that Bilbo looks more like a grocer than a burglar. Um, that's all we know about Glowen. Um, uh, so, why did he choose Glowen both to be the one mentioned and to be... Hey, this is uh, just not the orc camp. Ooh! I love maps. I love close-up maps. Um... Great. It's Forla, but I don't want to be here first. I should go find the camp first, if you don't mind, just in case one of the epic quests leads me to here as well. I need to, yeah, I need to weave so that I can turn to this map. Okay, so I need to go down to the road. I got all turned around when I was... Um, Doing mounted combat there. Um, I'll get the stable. I'll get the stable. Don't worry. 
I'm just going to go to the orc camp first, and then I'll be right back. Okay. So, is there a reason that he chose Glowen? I don't know. I mean, I don't know what it is. If I had to make a wild guess, my wild guess would be um, because of Glowen's rude comment. Um, it makes... It gives a, a kind of emphasis to how far Bilbo has come. Um, when, if we remember Glowen, Glowen's rude comments about how Bilbo looked like he wasn't any good uh, and uh, that he looked more like a grocer than a burglar, um, the way that it sort of shows both of their characters, um, you know, in... Uh, Obviously, a com not only in a completely different relationship with each other, but a completely different place themselves. Um, that's, uh, uh, you know, that's definitely uh, something that I think is, um, it has a nice effect. So I think that that would be uh, my guess. If I had to guess, that's what I would guess as to why he chose Glowin. But I don't know of any other reason why he would choose Glowin. Okay, so that's it. I just need to go to the front gates and turn around. Uh, so that's fine. Um, and I was supposed to go back to Skulfig and uh, tell Weedfara about that. Um, fine, let's go back to Fort Law then. Where's my cursor? There it is. I hate it when it's snowing. I can never find my cursor in the snow. You're right, Phil. The spiky thing does look familiar. Dunland, was it? That we saw spiky things like that near an orc camp? Okay. All right, let's go back to Forlaw. And then we'll go out to... Then we can take the... We can take a horse. We can, we can uh, you know, take a... Uh, fast horse, hopefully, to Skullfig from there. Was it by Parth Gala? Yeah, you're right. That's absolutely where we saw them. It wasn't Dunland at all. It was Parth Gala. You're completely correct. Oh, that's excellent. Well spotted and excellent memory there, Phil. Wah! Woof! Ah, help! I'm totally going the wrong way. Four laws up there. There's so many intersections on this road. The map system, you know, the highway system here in uh, Four Law is, uh, or in Wildemore, I should say. Kind of confusing. All right, but here we go. All right. Supposed to talk to Garwig. I'm gonna leave my war steed at the gate, thank you. All right, what do you say? So your symbol is a horn. Okay, that's kind of cool. Oh, there's a reflecting pool, I think I'm good. In the barber shop, the first thing we meet is a very iced over barber shop. And this looks like a stable, but not that kind of stable. Okay, a stable with no master. Hi, lady. Okay, what do we have here? We've got a bard. What is this, like an outdoor common room? And a lady bard? Wow, okay. You guys are hardy folk. I would think that, uh, you know, patio seating is great, really, almost any time of year, but I think it's a little chilly for the patio seating now, but not in Forlaw. No, sir. Tasks collection box. Wow. 
Collection Box 65 through 120. Okay. Boy, I haven't done tasks in years. Let's see, what's this? Weaponsmith, huh? Cool. All right, so that's where the uh, legendary stuff is. Cool, cool. Oh, and there's a vault. Oh, how fun. That is really good. Where's the uh, milestone? I'd like to milestone this place. Survivors of Wildemore? People of Wildemore? Hmm. Okay, that must be where the vault is. We've got beer, auctions, and cash. Great. Really good to know. Here's the milestone. I will immediately replace my Skulfig one. Yes, I do. Assuming that I can find the... Oop, ah, oop, ah. Okay. The Stable Master. Here he is. Like right in front of me. Hi, Mr. Stable Master. The Rohirrim. Do not surrender. Oh, wow, I can go all the way to Bree from here. That's excellent. And the 21st Hall, a favorite of mine. Um, in fact, as you can see, Griffith still has a uh, uh, milestone to the 21st Hall for this reason. Um, that's where Griffith goes to do a lot of his crafting when he does crafting, which is too infrequent. Okay, and I can get to Harwick and Snowburn. Great. All right. Dunfast's Refugees, Cardrick's Camp, and Byer Tor. Great. Oh, looking forward to those. Okay. I will go back to Skulfig soon, but I might as well talk to Garwig while I'm here. Okay. Let us head over to the Mead Hall on an island in the lake, which is super cool. Hologro, do they, they, they do patio dining in the winter in Michigan? I believe it. I totally believe it. Um, let's see. Where am I going the right way? Yeah, more or less. Okay. See, from here, it doesn't look like much, right? Oh, like, oh, look, there's a meat hall and there's a little path to it. Okay, yeah, sure. And then you get out here and it's like, awesome. Love this. Oh, man. Wooden bridge out to the mead. This has got to be like the most defensible mead hall in all of Rohan. Yeah, don't do that, Olsen. Okay. Yeah, um... So cool. I'll enjoy looking at this from the side. Yikes. Stop it. When I swim out to the, find the crypt. Oops, I accidentally right clicked. Okay. I also like mead halls with straight paths up the middle instead of having to go around all the fire pits. The little multiple fire, put, fire pits are kind of nice. What? What are you doing? You're petting an invisible cat? Oh, you're peeling potatoes. Okay. All right. Close. Petting cats, peeling potatoes. Hey, do you guys have... Shield Maidens. I'm now doing a, uh, an official Shield Maiden survey of Rohan. Oh, Garwig is uh, an el elderly chap. Who's this guy? Garferth. What do you have to say for yourself, Garferth? You look unhappy. I am afraid of what is happening to oh, this land. But you're not unhappy at me, so that's good anyway. An Edzig? 
I do not know. I defended Scoot Fig like it was your own home. Oh, well, good. Kierna Barrack has been saying nice things. All right, Garwig. It's a sad thing to watch your land. More die. dead, and you witnessed it all, stranger. News of your deeds has reached me, and I honor you for fighting alongside my son Garsig. More and more die ever since this cold has set in, and now Garsig, Thrym, Grimgar, Humbald, and Cunigar a thane. Thrym was like a son to me, and I will keep his horn to honor him until the end of my line. I name it Winter's Horn until a hero of Thrym's ilk can claim it again. Oh. Cool. Cool. All right, what else you got here? Oh, two quests. Let's see. These lands were so, so much fair. death. My family drowns in it. I would give everything to see my fallen sons and grandsons alive once more. When the snows first started, three of my grandsons rode out into the Rhythen Downs and were killed by an unknown creature. The rumors of that of their killer did not live up to the creature's true form, the giant that murdered the men in Skufig. Yeah. That, Okay. This was many weeks ago, and now there are memorial flames marking the places where their bodies are found. Will you light the flames for me? I am too old, too brokenhearted to ride out. Okay. Light their memorial flames. Can do. The white wizard has taken everything from us. Yeah. Your heart goes out to the devastated old man. He has lost so much since the Doom of Snow. I like that. The Doom of Snow. And the White Hand came to Wildermore, more than anyone can bear to lose. You decide that you will wreak some vengeance upon the orcs who did this. They rarely camp far from their intended victims. Okay. Collect heads and wooden stakes. Whoa, Grifflet getting hardcore here. Okay. Uh, aiming to... Uh, uh, I'm totally blanking. Which Thane was the one that liked to put the orc heads up around town? Totally blanking. Can't remember. Oops. I right clicked again. Okay. Fastred, of course. Fastred. Yeah. Um, okay. So, we've got family history now. Oh, hang on. Let's... Hey! My right click worked on the maps. That's really interesting. Like it zoomed, it went out to the next level, like it does when I right click. Look at that. I accidentally right clicked, not even thinking of it, and it worked. Just goes to show how bizarre this is. Okay, so I've got one there and one. Where's the other one? Are they both there? Same spot? All right, I guess I can do them together. Why don't I go swimming? Go find that crypt while I'm out here. Goodbye, cruel world. Oh! Wow. Okay. Too high to safe fall from, huh? Fine. I guess I'll go the other way then. Interesting. So there's safe fall and there's less than perfectly safe fall, apparently. Oh, Carrion was invisible there for a second. Now he's invisible. Oh, wait, this reminds me. Did I ever upgrade his uh, cosmetics? I have my 
uh, soot cross uh, stuff on him, right? Yeah, I think I did. Yeah. Did I forget to... Uh... I got my soot cross leggings. I'm gonna upgrade his tail. Okay. What is this? Mount appearance hide slot. What? I don't even know what that means. Um, I have my Sutcrofts. Okay, I do have my full Sutcrofts gear. And my King's Banner. Accessory. Excellent. Okay. Right, I'll stay in my Sutcrofts gear for now. I can change the pattern of his hide? Oh, hide! Like... The horse is hide. I'm like, hide what? I thought the hide was a verb. I see. I see. So I can get new hides. Okay. All right. Not sure how that's much different, but. <laughs> right. Hide the noun. Yeah. No. Makes perfect sense. Um, though I have to say, seems a little bit weird, just a touch on the weird side, to be changing the hide of your horse. I mean, do you at least get the horse's consent before you do this? Oh look, it's the graveyard. All these cairns and spears. Hmm. And I'm wearing my invisible hat. Okay, so the fires show. Oh, there we are. I see them. Whoa. War band coming through? Perhaps? Or are these just all random mobs? Man, this place is loaded. They are just mobs. Would you get out of here? You're not welcome here. So let's dismount Griffith. Oops. Uh, there we go. That must be his shield and some flowers and a little little vase. Okay. There's the other one way up there. So this is where Alferth died, huh? Killed by the giant, I guess? Hang on, I got all these quests here. Respect for the Fallen. Writhen Down's Bowmasters roam too near Wilsig's memorial. It, it must be driven off. Okay. And a warband. Uh, you know, I'm okay on warbands for now. So I'm supposed to defeat Bowmasters. And... Yeah, Alright. I got all kinds of things to do. And not too much time left in which to do it. I think maybe... I'm going to sneak my way back to the camp. I think that is a warband. I'll sneak my way back to the orc camp. There it is. And then I will... I think I will 
have to go soon. Have to go plot and plan with a bunch of other professors about the future of the humanities. One of my big projects. Working on a new, awesome, innovative humanities undergraduate program for Signum University. Okay, but I have to see. Oh, look at all these new quests. Good grief. And the body will die. An undeniable way to confuse and thwart the efforts of the White Hand is to defeat their leader, Nagri. Okay. Uh, the White Hand orcs of Fusham Doram have raised banners in their triumph over Skulfik. You should tear them down. Okay. Tear down banners. Defeat Nagri. What is up with this... Look, Mr. Archer. I wasn't gonna bother you. Oh, look, a stake! That's handy. First I can get your head, and then I can get that stake. Perfect. What a lovely combination. Alright. Oh, I'm really interested though in this latticework structure. That is incredibly ornate. Is that metal? Have I ever seen the like of this? In an orc camp? Did you guys make this? What is the story with that? Yeah, it looks metal. You individually crafted? Each one of the, I mean, man. That is very unusual for orcs. And why? What on earth is the point? of this structure when a like a tent would serve just as well in fact you have canvas over it partially they can't have made this and yet it looks relatively orcish man unbelievable I mean, everywhere else we get, you know, like this kind of tent consisting of like boards leaning up against each other, right? We get this like lean to. We get wooden palisades. Metal spiky things. Look at this ramshackle business over here. Bunch of random spiky. See, this looks like a wrecked siege engine that they just threw a tarp over. That's the kind of thing that I expect. Did you interrupt me picking up the wooden stake? I just wanted to get a stake to put your head on. You just had to come running over here and volunteer your head. Oh, I have to click on him to collect his head? <laughs> okay. Ogre cages? What are ogre cages? Wait a second, let me test a theory. No, oh, it won't work. So I thought I accidentally uh, 
right clicked on the orc who gave me his head just recently. Like, effectually right clicked on. So the metal structures hold the ogres? Those are ogre cages? That's nonsense. I do have to collect his head individually from his body. Whoa. All right. I'm going to go up on the slopes up here because I am out of time, unfortunately. Um, but that is absurd. Ogre cages? Absurd. Absurd! First of all, like... You want to make a cage for an ogre. Oh, fine, you make a metal cage, but you don't make it out of delicate lattice work, right? I mean, come on. Like, all those little, like, tiny little individual squiggly metal bar. I mean, like, a, a, an ogre would bend those out with his finger, right? Um, I mean, no, that's absurd. That is ludic ludicrously impractical. And anyway, like, why would you need to make it that ornate and decorative with all the little squigglies in there? I mean, an ogre's big enough, you know, if you're, you're keeping a big troll or something in there, you know, you... Yeah. I mean, all you'd need would be the, you know, the basic crosshatch pattern, not the individual things. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I know. I got to take down some of their banners and stuff, too. Griffiths, there's plenty of work to do here in this camp. But uh, we will... Uh, we'll see. We'll see. I got to say, I just, unfortunately, I have to stop a little bit early today. Because um, I've got to gotta go and meet a bunch of folks. Um, but uh, thank you for... Uh, helping me at least find workarounds uh, for my uh, uh, issue here. And um, thanks for joining me. Uh, my first stream on my new system. Uh, still um, ironing things out here. Um, but anyway, thanks very much, everybody. And I, will, I should be back next week. Uh, I am done with my traveling now for a little while. So uh, I think I should be here for uh, most of the Fridays upcoming. So thanks very much, everybody. And I will see you guys next week. Bye now. Thanks for joining in on my rambles around Standing Stone's brilliant digital adaptation of Tolkien's world. If you enjoy these adventures, please consider supporting this and other entertaining educational programming by donating at signumuniversity.org fund.